first of all, football is what I want to do. It's just one of those things as a little boy when you support your local team. You grow up wanting them to be a footballer, they're your role models, and the impact they have today in the world, off the pitch as well, it's just a massive, massive dream. They are under pressure, uh, there's no doubt about it. They're, they're looking for a livelihood in football. It's their one chance, they've got to try and grab it tonight. It's all that I've ever wanted to do. I didn't really see myself doing anything else. It's something that I've dreamed of doing since I was a little boy. I've worked hard. I was at Leicester from the age of 10 to 18, so I've been there for eight years. Also represented Northern Ireland at uh, under 17 and under 19 level, playing in the Euro qualifiers. At the start of March, we had decision meetings. Me and my mum went into the club for a meeting with the academy manager, and it was simply a decision of that there was no pathway for me at Leicester. Schoolboy, it was that was a good time for me personally. You know, I'd say I was one of the top performers in my group. I got my scholarship early. So at the start of the beginning of under 16, I got from my scholarship. I uh, started the scholarship, was doing quite well. Um, you know, towards the end, kind of confidence was low. And they basically, we went into the meeting, we had our head of academy, head of coaching, and they basically, you know, just said, you know, unfortunately, we're not gonna be offering you a new contract next year. Everything kind of went out of my head and it was kind of like, well, a bit of a shock. You've been here for six years. So I was kind of like, not sure what would happen from here, you know, thoughts going through your head of, is this the career I still want to do? You know, do I want to go somewhere else? Do I want to try something else? Do I want to stay in football? It was a big, you know, big thing for me. And it did take a week or so for me to get back up and, you know, say, okay, Reese, where are you going to go from here? I was at Wolves for about nine years. Um, just went on trial there about nine years ago and I've been there ever since. Uh, had a scholarship there as well. You've You've obviously got to put in a lot of work, um, you know, not only on the pitch but off the pitch. Um, we've been doing our BTEC college work for the whole two years of my scholarship, so that's another thing that you've got to work at. Um, but then on the pitch, you've also got to like, you know, you really got to try your, your hardest, and uh, you know, hopefully the coaches see that in you, and you know, they decide to offer you a pro contract. Yeah. We all uh, had meetings. Um, Everyone would then be told in that meeting uh, whether we were going to get a pro contract or not. And I just wasn't one of the ones who got a pro contract at the end of my scholarship, so yeah. If I'm going to be honest, it hurt a lot. Um, again, because I'd been there for so long. Um, I'd spent so many years at the club. Uh, you know, I knew a lot of people there. I'd made loads of friends there. Um, and it was, it was just a real homely club to be at. And, you know, I enjoyed my time there. I suppose maybe for a few weeks you, I thought, you know, Christ, what am I going to do now? It came as a shock. Because I've been there for eight years, it's all I've ever known. I didn't have anywhere before that. So you kind of go into shock a little bit. Obviously your mind just starts going into overdrive, thinking about what you're going to do next. Uh, but never consider giving up football. It's what I've always wanted to do. It's not uh, something that you do uh, over a month period. They've been with the football clubs in general two years, sometimes even longer than that. So what you have to do is, you know, consider uh, the budget restraints that you've got at the football club, how many gaps in the squad you need to fill, and, and the quality of the player that you're having to uh, give the bad news to. So it's not easy, I have to say. I've delivered it from the Premier League at Leicester City down, you know, down at Port Vale level in League Two, so uh, you know, I let some good players go, I have to say, who, who've uh, come back and haunted me. We let a player go last year, he's got a prior QPR. Matter of opinion if you think that's a mistake, but there's not many. The message I always give to players is, you know, the game's about opinions. You know, my opinion at this precise moment in time is that you're not quite up to the standard that we require, but that shouldn't, you shouldn't lose heart with that. We got told of the exit trials uh, before we uh, got told our decisions. Um, so they were always in like sort of the back of my mind. Um, but obviously no footballer really wants to think of that before they get, the, get told that decision. 
Assessment trials has always been a thing that people know about and it's proven to work in the past. Tonight is really uh, part of our progression programme. Uh, so we have the players for two years on an apprenticeship programme. League Football Education manage that process, make sure that they are achieving their apprenticeship framework. Um, and I think one of the things that we recognise from a contractual point of view and from a moral point of view is that after that two years, uh, decisions are being made about players as to whether they'll be offered a professional contract or not. Um, and we see it as our uh, duty to make sure that for those that aren't offered that professional contract, we offer something to allow them a route uh, either back into the game or utilising the football skills that they've acquired over the last two, three, four, five, ten years um, to move forward within football um, in order to make the most of the, the talents and skills that they have. One of the most uh, notable uh, successes from this event has been Jamie Hopcutt who took part in these events and as a result of that went on the Swedish player placement programme. Uh, he's now playing uh, for Östersund, uh, so he's now playing in the top division uh, in Swedish football. Marvin Sordell and George Boyd are uh, other uh, individuals that have gone through this process. It's a stepping stone uh, for other things. Uh, yes, back into the football pyramid, but also out into other broader, wider opportunities as well. Uh, we've got a couple of players in the next couple of days at, the, at these events. Um, and basically, you know, I'm along here today to one, have a look at the uh, talent that's available and secondly to offer you know, a little bit of encouragement to the players that, that find themselves in the predicament that they're in. Well, like everybody else, you're just looking for something that you can bring someone to the club who's slightly different to what you've got. There's a possibility we could be looking for a centre-half. Obviously, I'm looking for shape and size and someone uh, who eats it and kicks it, not necessarily a Rio Ferdinand type, uh, someone, you know, a John Terry type who eats it and kicks it. You know, everybody's after pace. Uh, uh, position specific things that you need you know if you're a midfield player do you get on the ball are you brave enough to get on the ball again when you give them a, a pass a pass goes astray you know if you're a striker do you keep getting yourself into the box even though you've headed one just wide and another cross is coming in the box you know it could be that he pulls away to the edge of the box and you're thinking he's not really brave enough he doesn't want to he doesn't want to miss another goal so, you know, for every specific position, you're looking for different things. It probably is a small, you know, I won't lie about it, it probably is a small percentage that come through. 55 players, I would have thought if three or four of them get offers from pro clubs, it's still been successful. And uh, some of them might have to drop a little bit level, uh, lower to go into non league. Uh, so they eventually they find their level. It's very, very difficult, probably harder today than what it is when they were playing for their uh, Saturday sides or their pro clubs. To be fair, you know, for the first time, you've really got to be a little bit selfish. You know, you've got a, tonight they're playing 70 minute games, so they've got a 70 minute spell to show people their abilities. You know, in an ideal world, you want them into a football club, maybe two or three weeks uh, training, uh, seeing if they adapt to uh, the roles that you want. These players haven't got an ideal world, they've got just one window of opportunity to show their, showcase their talent. A car journey there, I was a bit nervous, yeah, I won't lie, but um, as I got to the stadium and you know, everyone else started turning up, you know, I started to relax a little bit more. So it was definitely a good decision to come down, hopefully play well today, attract as much attention as possible and serious attention. It's not just, oh, we think he's good, serious attention, so they talk about me to their superiors back at their clubs, want to get me in for trials and at the end of the day secure a pro contract. I'm playing left back today, which I don't usually do, but it's another challenge. It's as long as I'm out there on the pitch, I know I can impress. So I just need the opportunity to get out there. If it did go well today and I did manage to get scouted and secure a pro contract, I'll be over the moon. Be over the moon. It's not just one specific team who are looking for one certain player. There's loads of different clubs coming to watch. And it can be the start of your career as a footballer. This could be the next big step. They've really got to handle the pressure uh, tonight. And, and, you know, whoever's in that stand, They've got, they've got a 70 minute spell tonight to really impress. It's their one chance, they've got to try and grab it tonight. It's a chance to just go out and enjoy yourself, play some football, show us what you've got. That's all I want to say and then we'll have a chat with you afterwards, is that okay? What I would say is that 70 minutes, 
just fucking give it a good go for something, mate. You know, you probably won't see each other again. You know, you probably won't see the opposition. Work your bollocks off. Okay, just by tearing up, you've made that first positive step after a negative decision that you've had, okay? There's lots of players that fucking just don't bother coming. Alright? And they're packing football completely. Explore every opportunity you've got, okay? You never know might, what, what might happen. You might go out the game to come back in the game. Okay, you might go to non-league to fucking get back in the league. You might go to university in America and meet some fucking darling over there, okay? Yeah, she might fucking marry you loads of money. Alright, so I'll take you out at 25 to William Hospital, number five, plus Magic Side. Mentally, it was quite it was quite weird because I'm I would say I'm not a selfish sort of person or player. Um, whereas in that game, I had to be a bit bit more selfish than what I, what I was using. So maybe I might have you know dribbled the ball a little bit more than what I usually would have. I was quite impressed with my performance, um, if I'm being honest, I thought I'd done quite well. Uh, especially as I'd never been in that sort of sort of game before where I was just fighting for myself personally. Just what, the things I was doing on the ball, so like my dribbling, uh, beating players, you know, 1v1, uh, and you know, just getting shots off, you know, being a winger. The Reds, the Reds are you good, Josh Lepard, number one, Seppi Gray, number two, Al Templeton, number three. My mindset was to just go out and be confident. Although it's a team game, uh, football's a dog eat dog industry, so sometimes I think you've got to be a little bit selfish to try and take the eye, try and do something a little bit special. I think the fact that I just do what I normally do was good. I didn't overthink because it was an exit trial and I knew there was going to be so many scouts here and stuff today. I think, you know, when I got forward into attacking positions, for me personally, I think my delivery into the box could have been a bit better. I think it's really important we understand what success is. So for us, yes, there is a route back into the professional game. Uh, and this has been a start point for a number of them. So there's a number of players, Harry Buterman, uh, as an example, played in one of these trials, uh, ended up moving up into the non-league, uh, and now he's playing back in, in the professional game again. So this is not necessarily the move that is going to get you back into the game, but it's the start of that journey to, to, to move yourself back into the professional ranks. Just keep going. Every avenue you can find, just keep playing. And um, so uh, eventually you'll find your level. And we, you know, we were talking earlier, we know players have to drop down, but some players come back. Immediate first few days after the trial, it was I knew nothing was going to come, so it's just a waiting game. Just stay relaxed, carry on training at least to just keep up fitness and stuff like that. Uh, the thing that seems to be coming back to me a lot is a lot of interest from universities and semi-professional teams. Difficult one for me because I was playing left back and I've never played there in my life, but I just wanted to be on the pitch to be put in front of the scouts to get myself best opportunity. Um, thought in the game that I played really well, 
at left back. Um, didn't feel challenged that much. However, I would have loved to play my primary or secondary position, which was centre back and centre mid. But unfortunately, they were all gone. So I was happy with how I did on the day. So hold my head up. It's just a case of just keep going. And you, you know, one day, once you keep going and keep working hard for a while, that your chance will come and you will find someone that does like you a lot. Yeah, it was a bit nervous. Uh, I won't lie. <laughs> it was. Uh... Yeah, just trying to hope, hope they could just, those weeks just end a bit quicker yeah, until they got to this point. Yeah, uh, we got a letter come through the post and that had basically all the teams who were, who registered interest in me. Uh, two from America. One was Georgia State University. I can't remember the other one. Uh, and then back over here in the UK, I had a number of uh, offers from universities like Edinburgh University. Uh, and then there's also a few non-league teams, professional teams. I had Motherwell. Uh, from Scotland ask if uh, uh, ask about me and show some interest yeah a little bit excited <laughs> yeah, that was running about the house for about an hour after that yeah, <laughs> Still there. yeah. keep hold of that for a bit <laughs> I think a lot of boys nowadays think you know if you're not in an academy then you're not gonna become a footballer you know there's a lot of hype around being at academies at a young age and playing for the best academies but if you think about it you know the boys at Chelsea and that how many of them realistically make it into the first team? Boys at Arsenal, these top academies, you know, they're good players. But how many of them realistically make it into the first team? You see players like Jamie Vardy, like Charlie Austin, you know. I've been at QPR, so I had the chance to see him, you know, when we were at training and seeing him there and seeing him score how many goals and going into the Premier League, you know. It shows that, you know, just because you're playing at conference or at semi-pro level, that doesn't mean that's where your career is going to stay. You know, a lot of clubs do look at these levels and take players from there. You know, what you've got to remember is that there's football scouts everywhere. You know, at all levels. Everybody's looking for the next Jamie Vardy. Everybody's looking for that next diamond of a player. And it could be on a park pitch somewhere. So I always say to players, wherever you are, attitude, commitment, you know, it'll get spotted.